Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Hot Mic here on a lovely Thursday afternoon on the West Coast on the Outlaw Nation channel. I am the Outlaw, John Roker, writer, producer, and host here, and joined as always by the man himself, uh, the creator of the new website that is, or actually, new newsletter that is all the rage in Hollywood, the insider.com. It is the insider himself, Jeff Snyder. How are you? Johnny Boy, I am good, brother man. Good to see you. <laughs> You too, my friend. You too. A lot to talk about today with Marvel stuff for sure. We got some new trailers. We got some reviews. We got some stories that will probably break while we're here doing the show. So we're excited to jump into all of it. A reminder to all of you, the Streamlabs and Super Chats are open. So send them in now. I see some Super Chats already. The Streamlabs address right above Jeff's head. It's in the description of the video. It's also, uh, what, they're pinned in the chat as well. So if you have any questions about that, Sending your support and sending your love. 220 of you already joining us live. We appreciate that madly. Make sure you hit a like on the video and subscribe to the channel down below. And definitely subscribe to the insider.com, that newsletter. As I said, that's all the rage. Jeff, a lot going on in the world of Marvel. Shall we tackle that first and spend the next half an hour, 45 minutes talking about everything that's going on? What, what's your feeling? Yes, let's dive right in. So, I mean, okay, let's address let's last week, right? I had yes. been asked to keep the Pedro thing under wraps. And right? for those that don't know, Pedro Pascal in talks to possibly be Reed Richards and Fantastic Four. Go ahead. Yes, my source had given that to me off the record, but they were also like, listen, his schedule is insane. Like, we have, you know, like, we're just kind of waiting to, to hear what's going to end up happening. Um, yeah. But anyway, is uh you know a few days later her, you know uh daniel rickman went with it and credit to him you know yes. i think he's doing a good job over on his patreon and um i love that the trades all credited him with this Which shocking yeah but this this was the name that i sent john uh in the in our dm chat in the private chat here yes you yes. guys don't get to see uh during the show last week and then I'd said something to the effect of like, oh, you know, by the way, it's the same ethnicity as the other rumor that I told you, right? Now, obviously, yes. these are two ethnicities. Pedro Pascal is Chilean. Right. And Javier Bardem, who I'm told is, you know, being eyed to play Galactus, is, yeah. uh, you know, Spanish. Yes. So, yes. But John knows what, I'm, what I was talking about. <laughs> anyway, forgive me. <laughs> the point is, yes. I was told by a source that like, Kevin really did want someone of color uh, yeah. as Mr. Fantastic and, pot and potentially as the villain as well, um, because he felt like at least, you know, the way th that it's been shaping up, it's a very white cast. Right. Yeah. And I told you, like we told, we had said, John, on this podcast, like there's no yeah. way that there's going to be just four white people on Fantastic Four. Right. 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 Yeah. We had talked about that. Right. And my my initially said that Evan Moss Bacharach was not necessarily going to be the thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's and you know we'd heard that there that again David Diggs was was being looked at yeah someone of color yeah. a, a Jew you know I thought that they wanted to to hire like a you know a real Jew or whatever um, mm -hmm. to play Ben Grimm who was Jewish in the comics right but uh, again I don't know all my comic stuff here <laughs> I, that's that's where John comes in he's the expert <laughs> sure to a degree in comparison to you yes I I am the expert when it comes to this stuff but yeah this is. Fascinating news, really interesting news because I mean Pedro Pascal and I and I you did send it in the private chat last week. For those of you who know, we've been hinting at some things that we can and can't talk about. Certainly, Jeff is the one that has uh the scoops to 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 drop on people, but he has to, as he said in his newsletter, he has to now at this later stage in his career, he understands the value of maintaining certain relationships so you stay off the record. Let them break another that story because you've got another story coming down the road that you can break. So, you know, you got to have a little perspective. Now, look at a bigger picture, so to speak. When you're young, a buck like Jeff used to be, why not, man? Send it all on fire and, and make your name. But you got to – longevity I mean, is about playing the game. And so – With this, the Javier stuff, though, yeah, you know, like yeah. I was cautioned. I was just like, you know, like if, if, if you decide to go with that, maybe couch it a bit because yeah. – yeah. That is certainly not as far along. You know, they don't even have the four yet, right? Officially, right, 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 right. officially. 
Um, so I, I do think that Galakis will be sort of after that. But mm-hmm. like I said, mm-hmm. I Javier is definitely the top target. Whether he's able to fit that into his schedule, I don't know. I, I, I mean, yeah. I'm under the impression that it's like a voice role mostly or maybe some kind of mocap role, but certainly not in the movie as much as the other four. Right. Uh, and he has this F1 movie that I'll be writing about in today's newsletter, the Brad Pitt one. Uh, right. Well, going long. Well, I, I, you know, I kind of like the idea of Pedro Pascal coming in. And some people, even on uh, on uh, Twitter, were like, I'm kind of Pascaled out. And it's like, well, no, we're not at that saturation point, I don't think, yet. Last of Us was a really good series. But remember, you rarely saw Pedro in The Mandalorian taking his helmet off. It was mostly voice. Right. Over and certainly this last season was almost all voiceover. I don't think he did take his helmet off at all. So it was, or I guess when he jumped in the water, but like it's pretty much all voiceover. And so the first season you saw him take off his helmet near the end. So there's a different situation, different demands. It's the other stuff like Gladiator 2, like the F1 film, uh, like the other film he's got coming up here. Those are the things that you look at for him that are going to take. Sorry. Oh, sorry. The F1 movie is heavy. Sorry. Zach Kreger's Weapons, I guess, is what I'm talking about. That's another one that's going to take up his time as well. And Last of Us. So there's all these things that he's being pulled in numerous directions for. And so you look at the situation like, okay, but this is an interesting choice. And I tweeted this, Jeff, because I because you've been saying for the last few weeks that it, from what you're hearing, this is going to be having um, Sue Storm kind of be the focus of the movie. Not that she's the lead necessarily, but it's going to be her story. The other... Obviously, the other Fantastic Four are going to be part of it. So what has Pedro Pascal been really good at doing in a lot of the uh, properties and franchises that people love him in is taking a bit of a backseat to a lead female. He did it in this in this last season of The Mandalorian with Katie Sackhoff. He did it in Last of Us uh, there. Um, oh, I forget the actress's name right off the bat, but her, he played kind Bella of... Ramsey. Yeah, Bella Ramsey, right. He played a little bit behind her, but he still finds a way to claim his space to be seen as the male lead, the co-male lead there, but maybe not necessarily the front lead. And so it works. And so it's a smart thing to cast someone like him. Um, But do you think Feige, I mean, you you mentioned in your letter that Jake Gyllenhaal was possibly someone they were looking at. Uh, They were looking at a couple of other people, possibly as Adam Driver. So is it default that he's gone to Pedro because or two way? Because if, if Jake and Adam were willing to bring down their quote, he would have ended up with an all white fantastic four. Do you think I, I he would have made an that, adjustment in the other ones? I don't know that the others would have stuck necessarily. Okay. You know, maybe he would have tried to find, you know, a, a, a thing, you know, um, mm-hmm. with, with somebody, you know, uh, playing it. Who's a person of color. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, because obviously I think Sue and Mr. Fantastic are the most important roles out of those two. Or yes. out, of, out of four, four. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, forgive me, obviously. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, like, like I said, they'd had these screen tests, which I don't believe had been reported on yet. Yeah, let's, okay? yeah, let's talk about those. Yeah, Christopher it's Abbott and Jamie Dornan. Screen tests right before the SAG strike. Yeah. Like Gunn was doing for Superman. Like, you don't think Marvel was doing the, the exact same thing or whatever? So... <clears throat> they they fly out a group of actors, and I think that there were, may have been three or four of them. I'm not sure who all of them were, but the two names yeah. that I was was were Christopher Abbott and Jamie Dornan, mm. who I think makes sense. I think that those are both like guys with superhero eligibility who are both sure. you know, good actors. Jamie Dornan gets a lot of shit for Fifty Shades of Grey or whatever, but like he's impressed me in other stuff. Yeah, Belfast, um, damn good in Belfast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like. I, I think both of them are rising like leading men in, in mm. the industry and it's smart of Marvel and DC to, or maybe DC um, to be looking at these guys. Maybe DC will look at them now after I put these names out there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, that e- either way, the test did not go very well. Right. Mm. And that's what m- made him go back to Jake and Jake wanted too much money. Understandably, Jake's like a real movie star. Right. 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 And this is what I've been saying for months, John, yeah. right? They don't want to break the bank as far as talent goes for this movie. You, that's right. why when people were putting out Margot Robbie and then it was Emma Stone and they did go to Emma Stone, but Emma Stone wanted like 15, 20 million, whatever her quote is. It's just like right. they can't afford to do that. The property is the star here. So right. they can get away with maybe doing it, you know, for an Adam Driver who's quote, you know, maybe closer to the eight to 10 range maybe 12 but yeah. they're not going 15 20 for, for this movie 
Like that was, and yeah. that was the outside range that Adam drivers. I don't know what Pedro costs. I don't know what his quote is. Maybe it's closer to, to six to eight. Right. Right. Well, let me ask you this, because it's fascinating when you look at actors, right? Emma Stone, currently in this new um, Showtime series, right, the, about the reality show, they're not paying her $15 million to be on that series, I don't think. No, no, or, I don't the, know. or the Yorgos film that's out now, they're not paying her $15 million to be in a small film like that. So is this a no, situation like... Cruella, huh? For Cruella, they are. Oh, okay, fair. So that's the so that's the thing for her is like, well, if it's a big studio picture, this is my quote. If it's something that's going to challenge me artistically, I bring my quote down. My question is why why bring the quote so high for something like prestigious like this? Why bring the why not lower the quote a little bit to fit in the the parameters because you're going to be the lead, you know? But what makes this prestigious other than just being associated with Marvel? Like the, these movies are not the most fun to necessarily make. There, you mm -hmm. know, there's mm -hmm. big reshoot periods. The press is endless. Um, yeah. and, you know, you become identified with that role, which can sometimes True. make it hard for people to buy you and other things. Like, True. I, I think you're asking a lot of an actor. Um, and just plus they have to sign up years and years of their lives. It's usually like five or six movies, unless you know, right? It, it, it's somebody special. So, uh, yeah. I don't know how prestigious it necessarily is from an actor's point of view. Right. So let me clarify that because I want to make, I see people in the chat saying the same thing. It is fucking prestigious if you know the comics. The Fantastic Four is revered by so many people in the Marvel universe, by Marvel fans of these comics. I mean, Spider Man is really the only other rival to Fantastic Four. This is why people get so upset about the fact that they messed it up like, twice before. You're talking, about rival, you're talking about comic books. We're talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. But I'm saying to you that that has prestige as well. Don't be don't be dissing that. People call you know who's going to see these fucking movies are comic book fans, and so they have a level of it has a level of prestige to get this right. The X Men has a level of prestige as well that you want to get right. There is a level of prestige. Now, it isn't a fucking Scorsese film or a Nolan film. I get that. But within the confines of Marvel, Fantastic Four is a very prestigious thing to be a part of. So maybe yeah, in her life, why it wasn't why quite why like that, which I understand, you know? Yeah. We've all been chasing this casting for months. It's all we can talk about, you know, every little yeah. thing. That's why I'm putting the Javier Bardem thing out there now, because it's right. like my source I know is accurate. I know yeah, my yeah, source yeah. their stuff. So it's like, I can't really wait to see if this fucking deal develops or not. Like right, this is right. just where we're at now. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Fair point. Fair point. Um. So do you? Th how? How? How can I say this? How sure are you on a percentage scale that this is the cast? Vanessa Kirby, uh, Moss Bacharach, Pascal, and Quinn. How clear are you that this is the cast? That's tough like to say. Like, are you in 60, 70? I don't want to put a, I don't want to put a number on it. I don't okay. want to put a number on it right. because then that number gets thrown back in my face. Like, you know, it, it always does. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, listen, it's Marvel. Yeah. Like anything could happen. Anything could change. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. But like, as far as I know, it's yeah. been these people kind of all along. Now, what about the age situation here? Because what Pascal is, I mean, uh, yeah, Pedro's almost 50 here. And Vanessa, I think, is still in her early, late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, 35 years old, Vanessa. So do you think we'll get a little pushback in this situation um, between them? And uh, will people see that as, oh, she, he's too old for her? Or this, like, is there going to be a bit of denigration on that? Or are they not necessarily going to pursue the romance 100% here? Because from what I understand, there have been rumors about a a uh, a uh, love triangle possibly being a part of the story here as well. Do you hear anything about that? And do you see any issues with the I, ages? You reference it I, in your article. Yeah, I do think that there were some there was some initial concern about age, right? But like Evan yeah. Rosberg is, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing his name. Um, is 46, yeah. right? 46, so it's, yeah. Like, at, at first, I thought that they were all going to try to be roughly the same age, like the last Fantastic right. Four. Yeah, right. With, with the, Ford, yeah. Miles Teller and everything. Right. But I don't know if it's as important. And I also think that just like in our heads, hmm. 50 seems, it sounds old, but it's not old anymore. Yeah. Right? Like 50, 50, is, 
50 is the new 40, you know, is the new 35 or whatever. Like yeah, Pedro exactly. Pascal doesn't feel like an old guy. Like he still yeah. feels like a new, exciting, budding movie star. Um, yeah, yeah. So I just don't know how much age really mattered in the, in the end. I think that they could get over it. And again, this is a tricky role because yeah. it's not focused. So I, I think that they, it was tough getting real established leading men yeah. to want to yeah. do it. So when do you expect an announcement? Do you have any kind of inkling or feeling in your in your scooper's gut that we're going to get an official announcement by say tomorrow or the end of next week? What what are you what do you what do you sense? I sense that they want to do the whole cast at once, which is why it's taking a while. Okay. Um uh, <laughs> I mean I would hope by I mean God, again, this, I have to like be careful of like what I've been told off the record and what's not. Oh, right. Okay, fair point. Yeah. The movie is sh is shooting sooner than we think. Okay. I think that deals would thereby have to be announced or done, basically, like yeah. if not by Thanksgiving, then first week of December. Yeah. Okay. All right. First week of December. I like that. Um, I'd be surprised if it lasted past that. Okay. But. I want I want to clarify one thing with the Pedro Pascal Javier Bardem situation. Bardem is Spanish, okay? They are not considered. He's a, one's Hispanic, and, right? I was thinking both are Latino. One is no, Hispanic. no, no, right? Exactly. And, and and this is what I want to clarify because I've had had this uh, clarified for me as well. Uh, because way back when I used, I was like Spanish. If you're from Spain, you speak Spanish. You're in the same boat with South America and Central America. That's not true, okay? Very much there is a pushback amongst. South Americans, Central Americans, Mexicans against Spanish because Spanish are seen as the colonizers of these countries. So to be clear, Chilean is not a Spanish. And I'm not saying this to Jeff. I'm saying to people who are watching. Chilean is not Spanish. So don't think it's Hispanics getting the role. But it is people speaking Spanish. It is people of color. It is Latin people. And that's a positive. So I, I think it's a good though, When yeah. people call Javier Bardem a white guy, yeah, well, back. that's a thing. I push that's back on that. Okay. Because you know, like, I know technically he may be considered a Caucasian or whatever. Yeah, by European standards. In the yeah. eyes of the industry, he's a person of color. Yes, 100%. 100%. Right? And I've yeah, been yelled less... at for that. Like, that's basically how yeah. I lost the national job. It's like, yeah, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's, tri it's tricky. It is. And, and, but and look, people don't acknowledge yeah. that. People just think it's yeah. not tricky. It's black and white. It's not. Yeah, right. Exactly. And you got you to clarify that. And as I'm a, the son of South Americans, I can speak knowledgeably on this kind of stuff. And that is absolutely the situation. There's not a lot of really in culturally intelligent people in Hollywood about the nuances and the differences and all these kinds of things. So, But you're looking at the person of color. That is what a Bardem is considered by most people in Hollywood. Of course, amongst Latinos, we know, and or Hispanics, we know what we don't he, need what he represents in terms of Spain. You can call him a white guy, like Penelope Cruz. A lot of people push back on that, yeah. saying she doesn't represent the Hispanic side of things or whatever. So there's always a bit of issue with Spanish. And I, I found it interesting that it was Banderas and Bardem, who are both Spanish, that were considered for this role. So, yeah. We're getting enough track, John. John no, I'm just trying to clarify for people. That's all. Yeah. What do you think of these castings? Do you like him as Mr. Fantastic? Yes or no? I love Pedro. It's not who I would think about for Mr. Fantastic. So I'm going to be open-minded to see what we're going to get because I have to be real with you. Having read the comics for decades, to me, it's an intelligent white dude. So to adjust my perception of it, I'm going to need some time. I'm going to need to see footage, a trailer, whatever. But I'm happy for Pedro. And I want it to work out. And certainly we've seen him conquer multiple different types of genres and get nominated for Emmys in some of those genres, including Saturday Night Live. So to me, I'm open-minded to it and I'm looking forward to it. Um, and I hope it works because what I love this Mr. family. What is Mr. Fantastic in Spanish? We'll say that again? What is Mr. Fantastic in Spanish? <laughs> Señor Fantástico. What, what, it's Señor not that. Señor Fantástico. Yeah. I love that. Señor Fantástico. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that Pedro radiates intelligence and he's yeah, funny. Sure. I like said you brought up the SNL stuff. Yeah. I, I think he's pretty good. I think he can do this. 
Um, and I think that he is at, at like kind of the perfect level yeah. Um, in yeah. his career, like where this makes sense for him and mm-hmm. it's a coup for the movie. Yeah. I agree. Um, and leaving the other members aside with the Javier Bardem of it all. And again, we don't know if this will actually work out, whether because he wants too much money or because the schedule doesn't permit with the F1 movie. Yeah. What would you think of Javier Bardem as Galactus? Do you like that? I would love that. And I'll tell you why, because Skyfall is my favorite James Bond movie ever. And of course, No Country for Old Men. So the idea of him playing a massive space villain gets me very excited. The booming voice, the incredible talent. Don't forget that one scene in Collateral, he shakes you to your balls if out of fear of what he might do to Jamie Foxx in that one scene. So for him, playing a villain is a natural thing. And so to use that voice, to use that look, to use the unusual nature of him, I think it's going to be a great thing. In fact, I, in my mind, I thought that was a great choice, whereas the Pedro choice, I'm going to have to see a little bit more. I know he can do it, but I'm a little, I'm going to need a little more convincing, but with Javier Bardem, I don't need any convincing. I, I know he's going to be great as Galactus, if that's where they, in fact, when they said Banderas, I thought that was completely wrong, and I think I think Bardem is so much better to play um, the uh, Galactus than Banderas is. I don't buy Banderas as a villain, and I never have. You know, okay. Um, yeah. All right, so I want to move on from Marvel at the halfway point of the show. So let's spend these next few minutes talking about the Kang Dynasty stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Kang Dynasty here. Director Destin Daniel Cretton has quote decided to step away from Avengers: The Kang Dynasty in order to focus on other Marvel projects like uh, Wonder Man, which is a Disney Plus series, and Shang Chi Two, which uh, um, none. There's been nothing about that in quite some time. Um, and uh, there are rumors that they might change the title of Avengers to the Kang Dynasty, and you speculated on Twitter that they might call it Secret Wars Part 1 and Secret Wars Part 2, and I went a little bit further and said, I have a feeling that they're going to bring back the Russo brothers, and I have been told by a couple of sources of mine that possibly Marcus and McFeely are already unofficial advisors over the last few months at Marvel. So to me, I mean, so that's how I'm seeing it. So Jeff, what what's going on here? Why is he moving away? What is the okay. real reason? What I'm getting at is like, there, there's going to be a two-part Avengers finale, right? That yes. and whatever you want to call it. Right. Do I think that they're going to release a movie called The Kang Dynasty? No, I feel like you have to get away from the word Kang. Yeah. Right. Kang, Jonathan Majors. We don't want that association. I mean, with a title, yeah. I mean, it's branding everywhere around the world. I think you got to get rid of the word Kang. Mm-hmm. Will it be called Secret Wars one and two? Historically, Marvel does not do that. Right. 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 So it, it's it's it would be Secret Wars and something else or something else in Secret Wars. Right. Um, right. But that's what I'm getting at, you know, as a placeholder, because obviously I don't know what the other title could possibly be. But that's what I'm thinking. It's going to end up being like a Secret Wars Part One and Secret Wars Part Two kind of thing. Um, you know, as far as Destin leaving and everything, it, it's because I think that they want one person, or I guess if it's the Russo brothers, two people uh, yeah. doing these movies. Mm-hmm. You know, I I wouldn't be shocked if it wound up being someone like Benson and, and Moorhead, which is I think what, what we talked about. Yes, with Loki, they were so incredible in that season too. Yes. Right. I, I I just feel like they've kind of got the Marvel house style down and they could yeah. probably deliver in, the, in a similar way that the Russo brothers could, which is so wild for me to think of like that Marvel even saw potential, that kind of potential in these and like, and like hats off to them. Like, I'm just not yeah. a fan of their movies. Right. Okay. Um, but th- they could do it or it could be Shackman, right? Shackman could do Fantastic right, Four and have yeah. that come out in, in 2025. And then, yeah. all right, you know, start you start focusing on Avengers in late 2024 as, as Fantastic Four is in post. And, yeah. you know, you prep those movies for 26, 27, or as it turns out, maybe 27, 28. Who knows? Yeah. So yeah. I think I think it, well, all of those are good ideas, whether it's the Russos, uh, Benson Moorhead, or, uh, you know, what's his name? But I, I have a, how can I say this? From, uh, from a source I know, uh, the idea that he's going to be working on the Wonder Man series is cover. 
Because from what I'm being told, that is that the actors were told to move on from the Wonder Man series. Um, and if they were going to do it, they were going to be starting from scratch. So one of two things is going on. The Wonder Man series is dead, and this is a Justin Simeon, Donald Glover situation where they're saying he's got to, he wants to focus on Wonder Man and uh, Shang Chi Chu, and then like a month later they're going to say Wonder Man is canceled, they couldn't figure it out or whatever, and this is providing cover for Destin Daniel Cretton, um, or they are starting from scratch. They let some of the actors go, but they might be bringing some of them back to restart this machine all over again. So, and by that, I mean like Justin Simeon knew according to you months ahead of time. And then he claimed that he found out about it, losing this, the Lando thing in the trades. The same thing right. may be happening here is that the studio is providing cover for Destin Daniel Cretton, a little brand saving so that he can, it sounds like he's moving on to these other projects to focus on them and move away from the Kang thing. But it probably is just Shang-Chi too. And they gave the same kind of thing that Gunn did about Ben Affleck. Well, down the road, he might direct some Marvel movies or whatever. So it's it's kind of if, if up in the air and whatever. So He's welcome back, yes, you know. Yes, I mean, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm amazed. You know, Destiny and Cretton has done this much within the MCU machine. Like he just yeah. didn't strike me as, as that kind of guy. Um, and, and by the way, he sounds like a very lovely individual by all accounts. Yes, yeah. A lot of people say he's great to work with. 100. percent Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you sense it's just going to be Shang Chi too, and then? God I don't know. What I don't know all these rumors. I haven't been yeah. keeping up. I mean, I, I've I've yeah. heard stuff here and there, but nothing I would yeah. discuss. Okay. All right. Um. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything more to say on the Marvel stuff? Uh, anything? Anything more that you're hearing in the wind? Uh, anything else you want to jump into on this? No, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Do you, we're at 27 minutes. You want to take a quick break, and we'll jump into some uh, super chats on the other side. Or you want to keep going with the show? Let's do one more topic, but let's sneak it in. What do you think of Jimmy Kimmel hosting the Oscars? I like it. I like Jimmy. Jimmy's a good host. Um, so it's fine. Uh, and I think it's time we had a, you know, like a regular host, uh, the Billy Crystal of this generation. So why not Kimmel? Kimmel is fun. Kimmel is crotchety. Kimmel can make the safe jokes. He can also occasionally make the edgy joke. And I think a lot of people in Hollywood who go to his show genuinely like uh, doing his show. I mean, if you can get Rihanna to wake you up for your birthday at five in the morning, wish I mean, like that's that's power that Rihanna would want to take time out of her schedule to come to your bedroom to wake you up. That's power. So to me, I like that idea of him like uh, being able to host this and have it be fun. And then he tries to keep it on time and get people out. He gets it. So yeah. What about you? There's a mosquito that has been terrorizing me all day. <laughs> Going to <laughs> is it Jimmy Kimmel? <laughs> Live on the air. Um, I like Jimmy Kimmel. You know, like he is a safe yeah. choice. And when people say safe, it usually comes with the word boring, right? He's the right, safe, right, boring. Right, right. I don't think Jimmy Kimmel is boring. I like Jimmy Kimmel. He's likable. Exactly. Like yeah. to me, again, the goal is not to like, well, let's bring in someone who will bring in a whole new audience to the show. Yeah. No, yeah. serve yeah. the fucking loyal core audience of the show. Yeah. I do think because he is Jimmy Kimmel and he, you know, sees these stars as often as he does, he's allowed to get away with a little bit more. It's almost like ribbing from like a good friend. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he is a safe choice and everything, but he does a good job and I, I can't complain. Uh, I, I just think yeah. it's a no, it's a, there's like a no reward. It's a thankless yeah. job for people. Yeah. So I understand why they have a hard time getting somebody to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that a hundred percent. Um, let's see. Is there another one you want to slide in real quick? Uh, oh, the fall guy being pushed from March 1st to May 3rd, uh, taking the date originally held by Deadpool three thoughts on that, Jeff. Do you know why that's happening? Do they sense that this is a, a much more prime spot? Did they feel that the reaction to the trailer was so good that they yeah, think they can something. succeed? Hmm? I think that they feel like they've got something. I think that just like Gosling and, and Margot, like people want to see Gosling and Emily Blunt together. I think that mm -hmm. that is an exciting pairing for people on paper. Okay. I still can't get over how Gosling looks in this movie, though. <laughs> I mean, he's had some work done, right? What? Sir, how dare you? Um, I will not uh, make any kind of commentary he's, on what 
it looks Ryan like he Gosling just is overboard on filler or whatever. I love Ryan Gosling. How dare you? I don't know. He look, he just looks a little weird. Um, okay. Listen, I think that this movie is going to be another bullet train. I fucking get it. Uh, I think this movie is going to be another bullet train. By which I mean maybe entertaining, okay. you know, like a, a yeah. fun two hours or it's probably going to be like way too long. I bet it's like closer to 220 <laughs> this movie for some reason. <laughs> probably. It's yeah. just a feeling that I get from it. But um, yeah, I, I don't think it'll be a movie that like sticks with you necessarily or is some like genre classic. I, I hope I'm wrong. I haven't loved you. Too. I haven't loved you. Too. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we're at 30 minutes. Let's take a break real quick and then we'll uh, come back after this. We'll hit a couple of super chats and we'll talk some more stuff, including that Marvel. What if trailer and that Madam web trailer wolf daddy. We'll be right back right after this. Wolf daddy. All right, Jeff, let's get into some of these Super Chats real quick. Um, Blake Hinton says, great show as always, guys. Jeff, I know you don't have a lot of time to read, but when you do read, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, amazing novel. We just recommend that's that. the That's the video game designer one. It's, it's on my radar. Like, okay. one day, I don't know that it'll be this year or in the next, like, six months, but maybe next year. That, that, okay. I've, I'm aware of that one. Okay, fair point. Mike Joyce saying, I wasn't excited for Fantastic Four before Pedro Pascal was cast, but I am now. When was the last time someone being cast completely changed your mind on a movie? Jeff, I've got a recent one. What do you got? You're putting me on the spot? I have no, you you go first. You go okay, first. fine. Margot Robbie, Barbie. I had no interest in a Barbie movie, especially when Amy Schumer was attached. I had no interest in seeing that. When they said Margot Robbie, that was when I was like, okay, maybe this might be something I want to go see. No offense. I love Greta Gerwig, but I wasn't 100% on board until uh, Margot Robbie said yes. Then I was in. All right. I guess I'll I'll do a recent one as well, but it's mm. changed my mind for the worse. And that was when, remember the moment in time when we were all excited that Jesse Plemons was going to be the lead in a Martin Scorsese movie? <laughs> remember that? Yes, uh, I do. So then it became Leo and I just think in the end, Leo was very miscast. Uh, and and yeah. so it did kind of change my mind. I, I was worried about it. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, and for those of you who are interested, uh, Lily Gladstone has a wonderful interview in Variety that you guys can read talking about Killers of the Flower Moon and addressing the criticism in an honest and forthright way, which I thought was fantastic. Really great interview. Read that uh, uh, for sure. Don, uh, Don Ronaldo McWhiskey. Good to see you, buddy. He says, I can't help but feel Mr. Pascal is hilariously miscast as Mr. Fantastic. Shouldn't he be Dr. Doom or something? What does the chat think? Yeah, Jeff, I saw, I don't think it was Boss Logic or someone on Twitter saying like, what if they got it wrong and Pedro is actually playing Dr. Doom, not Mr. Fantastic, and this is a swerve all the way around. What are your thoughts on that? I don't see that. <laughs> no, that's not what it <laughs> um, I mean, Dr. Doom is, Dr. Doom is going to be a big, a big star, yeah. I think. Yeah. And I think it could still be Gosling, like who's, you know, a yeah. name I threw out there like last year. Like I, I think yes. that if Gosling joined the MCU, it could be as like a big bad villain like like Doom. But Doom won't be in the movie until like, again, that like a post credit sequence. Yeah, I've been hearing some weird names in the wind for Doom. I've heard Josh Hartnett. I've heard uh, Ray Fiennes. I've heard Jason Clark even as possibilities here. But yeah, Gosling is... The one, if you could get that with Pedro and Javier Bardem and Vanessa Kirby, holy crap, man, you've got yourself an incredible uh, cast. And if they all come in under budget, that's an even more incredible task to pull off with something like this. So, yeah. I wonder, um, I mean, do you yep. think Cruz could, I mean, would Cruz Tom ever Cruz? join to you? I think, and if, uh, could, do you think he'd play a good guy or a bad guy? I think the time has passed, to be honest with you. I, I think there's a, there's like a branch of the Loki timeline where Tom Cruise is Iron Man. And this could have been a really interesting situation with Tom Cruise popping up in multiple films as, as Tony Stark. But I don't, I feel like the time has passed. He's in his 60s. I don't know what role he played. Maybe a little bit older and he could play something like Robert Redford to play, like that villain in Just in about to say, I have two yeah. words for you, Robert Redford. Yeah, yeah. I could see Cruise doing that. In, 
like a corrupt okay. Captain America type guy. I could see that. Joel Davis says, will Adam Driver return for the Ray Star Wars film? Maybe as a force ghost. Uh, what do you think there, Joe? Oh, I have, I have no inside information. I have no idea whether Adam Driver will return. Would I mean, it be a crazy swerve if Adam Driver became Dr. Doom? Would that be a crazy swerve? I mean, it's less commitment. Oh, I, I, would buy that. I mean, I definitely yeah. would buy that. Again, they, they want him bad. Like, they yeah. definitely want to be in the Adam Driver business and have for some time. But, uh, yeah. And, and I, yes, I, okay, I could see him going back to Star Wars. I think Adam Driver had a decent enough time. I think he could, you know, use the money. Um, yeah. And may have even, you know, place to call, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. That's as far as you're going to go on that. Dalton he, Burnett's he got a new agent recently, I think. Oh, really? Okay. I you know, we got a new agent. Ben, ben Schwartz just signed with CAA. That's interesting to me. I think that feels like Ben is maybe wanting to, you know, move into these more prestigious projects and expand his horizons as a performer. And I'm all for it. I love Ben Schwartz. It'd be fun to see him do that. Um, Dalton Burnett said, question for both of you, which movie are people sleeping on for Oscar nominations? Jeff, you're uh, one of the three co-hosts in FYC. Please, what movie are people sleeping on for Oscar nominations? Oh, uh, should I help you? Next goal wins. Yeah. Is that what they're sleeping? <laughs> no, definitely not. What are people sleeping on for Oscar nominations? Yeah. I guess I'll go with society of the snow because i thought that was like mm. amazing okay yeah. uh, anatomy of a fall have you seen that one already yeah uh okay. i don't know if that will be showered with nominations but i think it could get you know a few okay Maybe. there's a what's the one coming up the nazi one coming up oh i have zone a of screening zone, zone of, of interest. interest yeah I that didn't, trailer I didn't looks care. stellar man what do you think i did not care for it it's very much okay. an art film um, okay, but I have heard great things about the Iron Claw and and Zach Efron in particular. Like that, that could be like, if you're asking me to pick us some one surprise like acting nomination, I'll go with Zach Efron and the Iron Claw. Okay, I like that idea. Uh, Ali Aloha, I like that Ali Aloha. Any guesses when we'll receive confirmation by Pedro Pascal, if not officially by Marvel, when he will decide? Well, fair point, uh, Jeff. I, again, I, I think it's done. I think it's pretty close. To, you know, mm. close to done, not done. Uh, I think his name or his face is already on like concept art that Marvel is using. Yeah, fair point. Uh, Nick Gurr says, "Hey Jeff, don't sleep on the Bob My Bob Marley biopic this FYC season. It's not coming out till January, right? So yeah. I don't it doesn't qualify. January or maybe I don't even yeah. know. Um, but yeah, I, I I think that'll be mixed. Uh, um, also, Roke, I can't believe you liked Maestro. Maestro, that movie absolutely sucked. It it um it did not suck." OK, it may not be it wasn't maybe as great as I was hoping it would be, but I still enjoyed it. And Cooper and uh, well, we'll save it for later. We'll save it for later. We'll talk about it later. Uh, Wiley OFC says just got out of the new Hunger Games movie. I loved it. I'm kind of biased because I love the world. Ziggler stole the movie from sorry. Ziggler stole the movie from me. I really hope it does good box office so we can get more. Jeff, I'm hearing a lot of people like this new Hunger Games movie and are shocked at how good it is. Uh, I'm seeing it tomorrow in the morning. What are your thoughts? Have you heard anything? Um, are you going to go I see it? I know you. I think it looked really good. Like I said, I saw the the stuff at CinemaCon. I was like, this actually looks interesting. Um, no invite. I got eight again, eight hundred emails about everything you could imagine relating to yeah. the Hunger Games, except for a screening invite. Uh, so I'll check it out on my own time. Maybe maybe when I'm okay. back in Massachusetts. Um, and oh, you're heading back soon. Okay, all right. I am going back for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Nice. Haunted underscore Autumn says, Pedro wasn't on my list, but he has the range to knock this out of the park. Love it. On the other hand, Javier has never eaten a single planet and is nowhere near 28 feet tall. I don't know about that. Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> um, well, yeah. You know what? I want to use that as just like a little, before we get to that next one. Yeah. Like, okay. Yes. Javier Bardem has never eaten a planet is not 28 feet tall. Why, like, why do actors need to fit like certain physical descriptions, right? So like, I, I did this Last of Us story, which we can now talk about. Oh, yeah. The Caitlin Deaver story. Yeah. And, you know, no no confirmation or anything, but right. just, you know, reading the tea leaves, that's what I, I sort of gathered. Um, Caitlin Deaver, I'm told, is in talks to play Abby in The Last of Us. And people were like, Abby, she's like 
supposed to be huge and like built like a fucking ox or whatever. And I know Caitlin Deaver is like, you know, five, two and, and pretty petite, but from what I, again, I didn't play the games. I didn't watch the show. I get it. Right. But if this Abby is supposed to be a real rival to mm -hmm. Ellie, mm -hmm. they need to be kind of even. And people are like, Florence Pugh is going to be Abby. I was like, that's not a fair fight. I don't yeah. think. Um, right. Right. I think Caitlin Deaver, who read for Ellie, was up for Ellie. It's kind wow. of brilliant if they end up casting like the mirror image. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, to, you know, she's supposed to be very similar in, in personality type and everything. Yeah, uh, Caitlin Deaver to me is a terrific actress, um, and they're lucky to have her. Is it possible there are other roles like someone had mentioned? Oh, could Caitlin Caitlin Deaver be up for what is their role, Dell or something? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. There's some other female roles that I'm not aware of, but mm -hmm. my source said they hear Caitlin Evers joining the show and that the role was Abby. I think it'd be perfect casting uh, for her. And and the voiceover actress who played Abby appeared in the finale of season one as one of the nurses. So uh, I love the idea of them bringing in Abby and I love the idea of it being Caitlin Deaver, who we just saw in that horror film for Hulu, No One Will Save You, and of course has been slowly working her magic on the small screen, like from... Uh, the Tim Allen sitcom to the Netflix series that she had that about her being raped that which was incredible, unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah, and then and then uh, what she did here with that Hulu film that was essentially for the small screen. She can kick ass on the small, of course, in the large screen as well in in Booksmart. But here, I think it could be really interesting to have her, and it adds more prestige to Last of Us as well to have someone like Caitlin. That's right. So I, I, what I was told, and this kind of le ties into Fantastic Four, obviously, because yeah. of Pedro Pascal, I think once again, he's taking a back seat and that Ellie and Abby mm. are like the right. two leads of season two of The Last yeah. of Us. He's kind of like the third lead. Um, so, and then again, Weapons is an ensemble movie. Right, right. Right, so, you know, when we say he's going to star in this stuff, Maybe he's not need, needed as much, you know, uh, yeah. as as we think. Um, but yeah, Caitlin Deaver, um, I, I, again, a, just a great actress. Uh, I agree. And so, yeah. and one of the seventy-one people who Craig Mazin follows on Instagram, I believe hey, that. I, think I, I believe swear. that. Uh, Thunder Wolf says uh, in the comics, Sue and Reed also have a big age gap. Oh uh, yeah, fair point. I don't know how big the gap is. I I don't remember how big the gap is. But of course, remember, that was written in the 1960s, 1950s. The fantasy of the older man with the younger woman. Men were writing those comics. So 35 years see. old. I mean, she's not like some playing some like 22, 24 right, old. Right, exactly. 25. Right. And Vanessa Reddy, it's like older energy too. Mickey Dawes says, do you all know if they are keeping Kang but recasting majors? Yeah, um, I think we're not going to know anything till the court case, right, Jeff? Or do you sense, I guess we can ask this question as the Marvel thing, do you sense, since they're moving Destin Daniel Creighton off of Kang Dynasty, since they, uh, although they had a really, that ending of Loki season two barely had Kang in it, do you, send or Victor Timely, do you sense that they are slowly kind of moving things around to move him out. There's a rumors growing more and more from a number of scoopers who are saying they're hearing that Marvel is going to pivot away from Kang and somehow weave Dr. Doom into all of this, uh, which would make sense for Secret Wars because he's a big part of Secret Wars. So do you think that we are, we are seeing the end of Jonathan Majors as Kang very, very soon? Yes. Okay. All right. Just wanted to know. Uh, Trace Fires says, "My money is on the Loki." Let me tell you what, though. Let me let me be honest. I, I don't sure. even know if that's a Marvel decision. That might be that might be a Disney decision. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I thought you were saying it was Jonathan Major's decision. That no, that might be like Disney. the I'm Bob Iger telling you, Kevin Feige, we're done with Jonathan Majors. The Disney Corporation isn't doing yeah. that anymore. That could Split. that could be what's up. It's going to be interesting if that bleeds to Teno Huerta because Teno Huerta was also accused of sexual assault by a woman who went on camera and spoke about it. So we will see how that plays out or if they even continue with Namor, to be honest with you. So we'll see. Tracer Fire says, my money's on the Loki team doing the Avengers movies. Who better than the people who are the most familiar with the multiverse story so far? Yeah, I'd be down with it to give them a, a movie for sure. Um uh, Galley Production says, what are your thoughts on the Superman legacy casting? Uh, is there more? I, I didn't hear anything beyond the authority um, actress the, that was cast. Yeah, the the engineer. Yes. And an, um, oh, no. Uh, sorry, I don't have. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. The engineer. Right. 
from the authority. Yeah, I, I don't I don't have her name off the top of my head. Um, seemed random. It seems like another Black Adam, just like one more hero where it's like, who is this? The engineer? Why do I care? Right. The, you know, vaguely similar powers to eight hundred million other superheroes yeah. we've seen before. I just I don't care about half like <laughs> again Edie Gathagy. Like what? Yeah, true. True. Uh, Connor, real quick, Connor Dorian says, what do you think about David Zaslav possibly buying Paramount? I I have not heard nothing about that. Last thing I think WB needs to do is buy another studio. Right? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think that's happening. I don't think that is the goal of WBD. I think he is stripping it for parts in, in, yeah. you know, in anticipation of a hopeful sale. <laughs> He's trying to strip it for movies. Uh, Neutral Lambert says, hi guys, old Schmodown fan here. Do you think there will ever be a movie about Matthew Perry? And any ideas on who, on who could even pull such a role off? I think it would be like a like a Max movie or something. I can't imagine it being a feature film. What about you? No, uh, no. I, I think that you know. I think he was even working on a script kind of about himself. I could see somebody producing mm. that script. I don't think that the character would be named Matthew Perry. It could be about an actor on a big sitcom who right. struggles with you know alcoholism or whatever. Um, yeah. I could see that being a, a movie or an indie movie or even a, a TV show, but I don't think anybody would be playing Matthew Perry. I don't think Matthew Perry, as beloved as he was, yeah, was big enough to have a movie about him. Whereas, like someone like Chris Farley, who's very similar, obviously, yeah, star yeah, yeah. of a big show and ODs and everything, um, I think he's big enough for a movie. Yeah. I mean, they never did a John Belushi movie that was worth it. I mean, Wired was fine, but it wasn't really. The Belushi film. The best thing was that Belushi documentary from a few years ago on uh, that was on Showtime for a while. Um, Eddie Alidia, real quick, what did Kevin have against Krasinski? Was he considered? Well, no. They I, they already snapped his neck. They were never going to consider Krasinski. That was fan service, in my opinion, in Multiverse of Madness. Jeff, do you did you know anything else on this? I mean, shit. If I'm Krasinski, like, how you got to hold out for something big? If something bigger, I don't know. Right. Right. Poisonous Plant 15 says, any idea what, any idea what Brendan Fraser's next project is? Do you know? Um, Krasinski's also busy directing. Uh, what, right. Any idea what Brendan Fraser's next project is? No. It's not a sequel to The Whale, though. Well, no, it wouldn't be, Jeff, would it? Um, <laughs> such a shit. We never really saw what happened at the end of The Whale. <laughs> no, but was there a body? No and body. <laughs> Empire Fan 1980 says, thanks to you, John. I watched The Bear. I like it. Yeah, it's great. I love to see the main lead of The Bear. He was also on Shameless, uh, show up in the MCU or DC soon. Well, we, you know, it's certainly possible. And apparently he's great in Iron Claw as well, Jeff. Yeah, I think he's just great. Uh, you know, Jeremy Allen White, been a big fan for a long time. Um, yeah. You're right. Uh, I do think that he, he would be interesting. There's a yeah. couple of things. I don't want to tip my hand about anything but yeah there's a couple of things i think he'd be pretty good for all right let's save the rest of super chats for later on in the show let's move on to some more stuff here jeff um let's move away from marvel let's move to dc here um uh, anna nagura the actress and playwright um was tapped by james gunn and dc to pen the new supergirl film Wo a woman of tomorrow a standalone feature centered on her uh, there's no director that's attached, and the deal only recently closed. And she was apparently hired to pen the Supergirl movie um, in 2022 as a spinoff from The Flash, possibly with Sasha Kaye. Uh, but now she was brought back uh, after that was kind of scrapped, uh, and she's going to take another run at this thing. So, what are your thoughts on this? She's also an actress. Uh, I think was it the uh, was it the Vampire Diaries? Yeah, the Vampire Diaries, Michael J. Fox. So other things. So, uh, and she's a seems to be a really good uh, um, uh, play writer as well. So what are your thoughts on this playwright, rather? What are your thoughts on uh, her coming in to write uh, Supergirl and the way they're approaching this? Do you think Sasha will stay, or do you think it's going to be a whole recast? I'm definitely just like confused about like the timeline of everything. Like mm. so She wrote this script for Walter Hamada, right? The uh, uh, Sasha Kaye spinoff. Mm-hmm. Um, Gun read it and really liked it, right? Yes, yes. And you know, it's like you know, I'm going to bring you back, and, and you you can do our Supergirl version. 
But right. didn't did he say something that like did he say like she's gonna write and it's gonna be awesome, or did he say that he'd already read her new Superman and that it was gonna be and that it is awesome? Like I was no, confused. I have I don't think she he said that she had he had read the new one. I think okay. he said he had read the old one, really liked it. Then when things kind of settled with the strike, he brought her back to make another run at this. And and they haven't revealed if they're gonna keep Sasha or not, who seem to be universally liked as, as Supergirl in the movies. I don't think that you would. No, not she's not the lead of the movie. Okay. Okay. Uh, no. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not familiar with, with Anna's writing or her plays or anything, so mm -hmm. it's, it's tough to say whether it's the right call, but if James Gunn liked her draft uh, the last time, then, you know, I guess he's got to follow that instinct. Yeah, she's rep for CAA for writing innovative... Uh, for acting and uh, her play Which Way to the Stage debuted off Broadway in 2022. And now she's working on adaptation of Alice Sola Kim's short story, Mothers Lock Up Your Daughters, which is set up at Warner's with 21 laps producing. So clearly, a lot of uh, fingers and a lot of pies for her. And we'll see how the, if the Supergirl happens uh, uh, overall, we shall see. Um, uh, anything else do you know about DC? Do you want to talk about anything uh, that you're hearing in the wind, Superman Legacy or? Some possible casting coming down the road for DC. Are you hearing anything? You guys want to know who Batman is? <laughs> no, but I'll, if someone asks the, 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 uh, our favorite question that we get every single week, no one has Ooh. asked it this week. I might have a little something. I mean, it's not Ooh. like a, a barn burner. But... It's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a, um... but someone will have to ask the question. Okay. Do you know what you do? You, can you give a hint of what the question might it's be? Question we talk about every week that someone asks, and I say sorry. Maybe I wouldn't won't say sorry this week. Oh, all right. Somebody sent in a Streamlabber super chat that uh, aligns with that. All right. I'm going to throw a couple of rumors out there. These are mine, right? This is not Jeff, so don't stain Jeff with any of my bullshit. Uh, oh, but what are you about to drag us into? <laughs> A couple of things that I'm hearing from uh, a source that I have, who was right about the um, Fantastic Four stuff and a little bit of the legacy stuff, but uh, they are hearing possibly that Chris Mundy is being considered as um, the showrunner for Green Lantern, the Green Lanterns. Um, and the other thing that they, he's hearing is that DC might be looking at Jody Hill to direct the Booster Gold series with James Gunn possibly writing some of the episodes, which I makes both sense. Of those. Both yeah. of those pass the smell test. Those could be right. I, I like okay. that, Johnny. And tell me this stuff. I'll look into it. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm never going to compete with you, man. But every once in a while, someone throws me a bone. I've got my connections around town. Nowhere near as connected as you are, of course. Uh, but, but I, I like the idea of Jody Hill that one smells more authentic to me. And uh, the idea of James Gunn writing those episodes or writing some of the episodes also makes sense because Booster Gold has that James Gunn kind of humor mentality. And so it would make sense for those two guys to work together to create a Booster Gold series for those of us who know Booster Gold, love Booster Gold, the DC Universe. So I would love to see that happen. So in I no way am I saying that's happening. I'm just saying that's what I'm hearing. So. I can see James Gunn being a big fan of Jody Hill's like HBO work. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that. That's. I bet they have a very similar sense of humor. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um. Okay. Anything else, uh, DC wise? Anything else uh, you want to you want to hit on or talk about? You guys want to know who the new Wonder Woman is? <laughs> Was that the question? Was that the question you were waiting for? No. Okay. Someone asked the question. For God's sakes, they did. Uh, this one's what I got. Uh, any Star Wars news? Is that the question you were talking about or no? It's a different question. <laughs> yes. No, that was the question. Haunted Dog. Okay. Uh, I mean, no, the, the, it's, it's a very minor thing because it's already kind of been out there and pieced together. But there were photos that were taken of Benjamin Bratt, right, earlier this year on the set of uh, Andor. Yeah. Or vis visiting wherever Andor uh, shoots, and he was there with the director and everything. So yeah, yeah. Benjamin Bratt will be uh, in season two of Andor. I know that. Wow, happens. you're announcing that. You're saying that you, this is going to happen. Yeah, I mean, again, there, there's photos of him standing next to the director, you know, okay. on, on location wherever they shoot Andor. So yes, Benjamin Bratt will be in season two of Andor. I love it. Adding another Latino 
to the series. I'm oh, all wow. for Come on, for God's sakes. Brown don't frown, son. Tyson says, proud of you doing your own thing, Jeff. I'm here for it. Um, and Fanboy Cantina saying, congrats, Jeff, on your new platform. Love the email newsletter and TikTok videos. There you go, Thank Jeff. you, guys. I have no idea what I'm doing on TikTok. I just learned how to use the green screen feature and put a little movie poster behind me. <laughs> I got to get my teeth fixed. It's freaking me out. I just, I have the check now. I can deposit a check. I'm going to the bank in the morning, and then I'm going to call a fucking dentist. <laughs> Um, okay, let's uh what do we got here? We got a five we got five minutes for the next break. Is there anything you want to toss out there for a conversation real quick before we get to the other side yeah, of this? I don't want to go, you know, we if maybe we can do another 15, 20. Like I don't I I, I gotta send this newsletter out tonight. Oh, oh you gotta get okay, okay. Well then let's take a quick break. Let's take a quick break now, then, and then we'll do the 15 20 and wrap up the show. Um Sounds right after that. And as I'm doing this, going to the break, 750 of you are watching us live right now. Please subscribe to the channel down below. Hit a like on the video. That's really big. Takes you two seconds to hit that thumbs up. And if you're watching later, leave a comment after you subscribe and hit that like button. Leave a comment down below what we're talking about. Take a quick break right now. All right, Jeff, let's get into some of these uh, new uh, news items here. Co the Coyote versus Acme situation has completely taken a whole nother turn now. Apparently, they are going to be, Warner Brothers is now allowing this film to be shopped, Dave Green's film to be shopped. Amazon is said to be a contender. There'll be screenings for potential buyers taking place this month. Buck was the first to report this, Matthew Bellini, Belloni's place. So your thoughts, Jeff, uh, was this the power of the social media or was this always the plan what are your thoughts on this well first of all i don't understand it okay <laughs> so did warner brothers or not did they take the write down or not because i thought it was applied to the q3 that's what it said in the initial report it did yeah yeah so i don't understand this is this all for show it's like oh yeah yeah, yeah. you can shop it just because they're like okay go and try and find a buyer doesn't mean that warner brothers needs to make a deal yeah right right like just because they're letting them shop it doesn't mean it's gonna get bought um yeah yeah, yeah. it's all about whether someone wants to offer more than the 30 million dollar kickback i guess warner brothers would get um yeah. and maybe they could figure out a way to undo that somehow i, I don't know how corporate sure. tax law works or whatever sure, um sure. but i understand again you don't want to just make a habit of throwing movies in the garbage, right? That's right. not good for talent relations. However, mm -hmm. it's a business. Yeah, right. If you spend $72 million, which is the figure, $72 million on the movie, yep. let's yep. say you spend another 48 to market it and put it in theaters, right? So now yeah. you're at 120. Yeah. Now you need to make 240 worldwide, right. really, you know, to, to break even in theaters. So it's just like, are, do you really think that this Looney Tunes movie with John Cena, whose yeah. movie that's in theaters right now was seen by about eight people, do you yeah. think that it's yeah. going to gross $40 million? I think it's a smart bet for, on Warner Brothers' part to say, you know what? We're not going to chase what we perceive to be bad money with more bad money, and we're just going to take our losses on this. Not, It's not a good thing. I get it. But this is a business. Yeah. Well, two things that... Uh, that you put in theaters and you can't just sell it to Matt. I mean, you could just throw it on Max or whatever, but like Max still has to pay for the content that it's licensing from Warner Brothers. Does right. Max want to, you know, chew up a whole bunch of its budget, of, you know, paying for that movie? I don't know. Yeah. And there are two things attached to this. First of all, uh, the story mentions that a number of filmmakers canceled their meetings with Warner Brothers in protest of this decision. And so that's how you make a difference, right? I tweeted about this and I said it's a business and some people were upset about it. Certainly I got into it with my brother Steel Wars over there at his podcast, my Australian brother. And it's just the thing that, look, it's business and studios are going to take advantage of these things. But he pushed back and said relationships are important as well. And he's right. And clearly these filmmakers not wanting to take these meetings with, or canceling these meetings with Warner Brothers might have affected Warner Brothers' decision along with the social media backlash and prominent filmmakers like Lord Miller coming out saying they'd seen it and loved it and thought it was great. So maybe but Warner like, Brothers, after, after the smash it took with Batgirl, like the kick in the face they took, 
didn't want to repeat the same thing here. I don't under, you know, I put no stock in Dave Green's friends, essentially yeah. getting a look at the Looney Tunes movie and being like, this Looney, it's the best Looney Tunes movie ever. I mean, what is the bar here? Space Jam? Like, Oof. I, just, I just like people are like doing cartwheels and like parading oh, through the streets in an effort to like gin up buzz and you know like this that's I don't think that's the way to do it. You want to gin up buzz, mm -hmm. you, you you bring me in. I'll tell you if you have a good Looney Tunes movie or. or if you have <laughs> um, I, I just know. don't. Have Lord and Miller, like what is that going to accomplish? I think Universal. No offense, Pixar. Jeff. Oh. I, I, no offense. I'm going to take the guys who do animation and are successful at it over your opinion on no, They're not going to offer an honest opinion, even if it's terrible. So uh, true, fair, because they're friends. It's like right. in their opinion. Right, right. It's like Guillermo uh, del Toro or, you know, like St Stephen King yeah, liking right. your horror movie. Like, yeah, that's what Stephen King does. He doesn't say the bad stuff. He just talks about the stuff he likes. Or James Cameron saying, this is a good Terminator film, trust me. Trust me. Or Steven Spielberg saying, Martin Scorsese, Marty, you're you're the master of cinema, and this is your masterpiece. This, this oh. Killers of the Flower Moon movie. This is your masterpiece. Okay, Steven. I can't believe he said that. I was so shocked when he said this that. This is what these people do. Everything is the, this is the best crew I've ever worked on. This is the, uh, everything is, that's it's promotion. That's Hollywood, baby. That show that's is. True. Awful. That's true. But the other side of this, uh, uh, the real side of this, uh, and this is something I kind of brought up earlier as well on my Twitter, is that like, something has to be done. You can't be mad at people for using the system if the system is set up the way for studios to use this way. Well, uh, Texas Representative Joaquin Castro took to Twitter and blasted the studio for this tactic, and Castro has gone after antitrust uh, situations in Congress. And so there may be a possibility that the, he could push some kind of bill here that will restrict studios from doing this kind of thing. Usually studios, you know, that kind of thing is covered within studios and Congress doesn't usually take too much notice. The fact that some members of Congress are taking notice of this could be interesting to just keep tabs on that and see if it actually leads to any kind of antitrust legislation when it comes to the studios in these kinds of situations, which I would be shocked to see happening, but you never know. You never know. Yeah, I don't, I don't um, see the DC telling Hollywood how to run its business. It's <laughs> a fair point. Um, all right, what else uh, do we want to get into here? Oh, yeah. Um, so the Madam Web trailer, did you take a look at it? Pretty much universally panned across the board. People hated it. There are already I memes about it. Yeah, yeah. How bad was this, Jeff? I mean, how bad was it? It, it, it yeah, it wasn't good. Uh, it was yeah. just very flat. Um, and it it's nothing like to do with female leads, by the way. It's just terrible, for God's sake. If we're going to have female leads in movies, we have to be able to discuss how the movies look. Yes, it's not yes. it's not an immunity. Um, yeah, it did not look good. Uh, I don't know why Sony persists down this road. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Horrific. Or horrific. And the worst instincts of Dakota as an actress are seen in that trailer, and that's a shame. And I'm supposed to believe that Sydney Sweeney is a high schooler. She's almost 30. She's 27 years old, man. So it's just like, it's a little weird on so many levels, but Sony's found so much success in those Venom films going down this road. Maybe the same thing here. And I feel bad because S.J. Clarkson is a damn good director. So how does this look like such as when she's the director? I'm just so confused by it all. It's the story. It comes down to oh, I'm having visions of, into the few, few minutes into the future or whatever. It's yeah, just like, yeah. Jan, um, yeah. again, I, I think Craven looks fun. That uh, looks fun. I, here's the thing. I don't know that this movie is going to be coming out in February. Like, is oh. there a date on the trailer? I don't think it's Yeah, was. February. It said, Feb I think February 12th or something like that. Yeah, in time for Valentine's Day. Yeah. Hmm, okay, because I thought they said coming, it said coming soon or something. Hmm. Um, I just understand that there's supposed to be reshoots for this movie. Still? And, yes, from what I understand. Jesus. Uh, and yeah. and it's again, it's just like you, you have anyone but you, which is the Glenn Powell Sydney Sweeney movie. Yeah, yeah. that is just a layup for Valentine's Day. Why oh, is right. that now taking the spot of Madam Web and Madam Web is finding somewhere somewhere else on the calendar? I just I don't okay. get it. Um, right. I'm gonna get into it a little in the newsletter, but let me go back and look a little bit closer at that okay. Madam Web trailer. I don't know. Uh, what if season two trailer? Did you take, get a chance to see that one? 
I did. It it looked cool. I, I don't really watch What If, but I, I imagine if you're a fan of that show and Marvel stories and animation, it's like the bee's knees. Yeah, man. It was good. Uh, my reaction's up with uh, uh, Vogel from the Geek Buddies if you guys want to watch it, but absolutely. I like the way it looked. Let's Wait, get in some reviews, Jeff. Because Which faces do you make? What's that? In the reaction video, is, is it Oh my god! It's Holy. this one. It's this one right here. Holy. This is the face Holy. I make you sack of shit. <laughs> we all gotta sell TikTok boy. All right, now let's, hit, let's get into the reviews. <laughs> Napoleon, did you get a chance to see this? Shall we talk about it real quick? Uh, I did see Napoleon. I'm reviewing it in the newsletter tonight, but uh, okay. yeah, it um, it was not it was not great. Yeah. <laughs> disappointing maybe the four hour cut will be better but this one just moved way too fast didn't and i don't mean that that it wasn't slow or boring at times because it was but i mean like historical moment to historical moment to historical moment and giving you no context for these historical moments at all um but i thought joaquin it was an interesting choice to make him essentially have all this cuck energy throughout the whole movie um, but I liked Vanessa Kirby. I thought she was good in the film. And the battle scenes, Ridley Scott's direction when it comes to the action scenes, the battle scenes are incredible. It's just the story. You just don't care, you know? These um, The battle scenes were terrific. Uh, I, yeah. I agree. But yeah, you don't care. You're really like left with like, what is the point? Like, Yeah, yeah. Now, now John, were you the sex consultant on this movie? <laughs> hey, was, she was a sexual dynamo, son. Come on. Um, the, the sex scenes in this movie are, are, are something to behold folks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. So again, I, I felt it was, it had the exact opposite problem of Ferrari where Ferrari oh. was about a marriage with like racing and stuff. And you know, the racing yeah. was okay. And everything, but to me, the marriage was more interesting here. Okay. The battles were way more interesting and the marriage just wasn't. And the sex scene, like in Ferrari compared to the sex scenes here, I, I get that they're trying to make a short King look even smaller. Yeah. in a way um here in napoleon but it, it just it did not work for me ridley scott yeah. cannot really balance the, the romance and and joaquin i yeah. thought was a little bit yes you got to find your protagonist interesting even if you're trying to denigrate your protagonist you still have to find him interesting so that when you're denigrating him you get the message of what the director is trying to do and i don't think that comes through when you're watching the movie um what about maestro did you get to see maestro yeah, I saw Maestro. I thought Maestro was okay, but also yeah. disappointing. Like it, it just felt like a story I'd kind of seen before. It didn't feel like this timeless romance. It didn't feel like one for the ages. Yeah. You know, it, it seemed like a, a story I'd seen before. Um, there were a few good scenes, like great scenes even, yeah. um, where Bradley, I thought, really brought it. But for the most part, I just didn't care about uh, Leonard Bernstein. Yeah, Bernstein. I liked it better than you did, I, I think. I enjoyed the performance. I thought Carrie Mulligan stole the movie out from under Bradley Cooper's um, uh, prosthetics and, and nose. And by the way, I didn't even notice the Like, the makeup was seamless yeah. here. I thought the makeup worked really well. I yeah. thought Bradley's voice was great for playing Leonard Bernstein. And let me say this, getting me in trouble, but as a theater kid, I loved that first hour. He's essentially shooting it like a musical from the 1950s, 1960s. And for me, that really worked. The problem I, I had I didn't like that stuff. Yeah I, yeah, I definitely preferred the second half. But go on. Yeah, yeah. See, but the problem I had was that we're the the relationship jumps from one stage to another to another, and you don't see the inciting incident that causes the transition in the relationship as it changes as it goes along. You just kind of, I love you. Now I fucking hate you. And I said, well, no, I need more context in order to grip it. That being said, I was still moved by the end. I did cry um, a little bit by the end or teared up a little bit at the end because of yeah. how much I enjoyed uh, the performances. But overall, yeah, it was a little bit of a letdown. Not a great letdown like, like Napoleon was, but a little bit of a letdown. I agree with that. Um, yeah, I teared up. Um, yeah. You know what I watched today uh, that you told me to watch? It's the Rebel Moon trailer, which I thought looked pretty good. Awesome. Yeah. Much better actually... trailer than the last one. Good. The first yeah. half of that trailer too looked. I was like, "This is looks great." I mean, this by the yeah. second half, it was like, "All right, this is there's a lot going on here and, and whatever." <laughs> but the first yeah. half, I, I mean, I was like, "Holy shit, this is really surprising." Right. Um, right. Did, you, did you see the trailer for that Daniel Radcliffe documentary uh, about his stunt double? 
I have not seen that one. No, I read the story where he tried to direct it and realized he couldn't. But I no, I haven't seen the story. I, I just saw the headline. Yeah, um, I watched that trailer this morning. I started my morning off with a good cry. It, it, I think I'm going to watch that on HBO. Uh, I'm not okay. like a Harry Potter guy, but I'm just a sucker for those kinds of stories. And it's obviously terribly mm-hmm. sad what happened to his uh, stunt double, but he, he perseveres. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, have you watched the Albert Brooks documentary yet? I don't have Max, so I haven't seen it. Okay. No, I haven't, but I would love to. I love, love Albert Brooks. Me too. Um, yeah. Is, is there anything else you want to discuss, Johnny? Yeah. Can I recommend to Colin from accounts? If you have Paramount plus and you're not watching Colin from accounts, this is a fantastic new Australian, uh, situation comedy and it's fucking great. Uh, it pulls no punches in the first episode, the female lead, you hear her taking a dump right in front of your face. So to me, this is a, like an Australian point of view. All, all, um, all the walls are down, and it's really funny. It's that dry kind of interesting Australian humor that I. So I highly recommend y'all watch Colin from Accounts. I liked Next Goal Wins. I know some people may not. It's a very, very simple throwaway sports movie, but there's a really sweet heart at the center of it, and I liked it. It worked for me because I know the story. I Rongan used to coach DC United, so for me. I had a connection to the story and really enjoyed that. So not everyone's going to like it, but I certainly enjoyed it. So I just wanted to put my thoughts out there. Uh, anything you've seen recently? I mean, I saw Thanksgiving, Eli Roth's movie, oh, um, yeah. which yeah. begins tonight. It, you know, I reviewed that on TikTok. So follow me on TikTok, guys. But uh, it, as a grindhouse movie, I think it works. Like if you're just going, you're showing up a little fucked up and you just want to see some gory kills it delivers on that front, but I didn't find the movie particularly satisfying um, okay. from a narrative point of, point of view. I also saw uh, The Master with JTE, uh, uh, John Woo. We went to go see Ooh. John Woo uh, and Silent Night. Silent Night. It was a little Joel. disappointing. It delivered. Oh, Joel was good. And it delivered on the action front, which, again, is why you're going to see this. But I think people are going to be surprised. It's a silent movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just Joel. That's the thing. People thought, like, I think I wasn't alone. Maybe I was. People thought it was just Joel who couldn't yeah. talk in this movie. No one talks. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot to ask, I think, of, of, of an action audience for 104 yeah. minutes. So um, I know we gotta go soon, but I want to debut a new segment on the cha- on the show. Uh, right now. And I here we go. Be- it's It's called the horror corner, and every once in a while, we'll have some some uh, horror stuff to talk about. Jeff, the first picture for the for the first Omen got released. Your thoughts on this shot? Does this look cheesy? Does this look like it's going to be good? Your thoughts on the first Omen? Yes or no? I will tell you right now. Up until you just showed me that image, I did not realize that it looks like like a monster that she's in the mouth of. Yes. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> uh, now that I see it, it's, it, yeah. I mean, it, I guess it's interesting, but again, you're like, who, who is that? What is this? Right. Where's Damien? I mean, maybe this movie makes money because it seems like any horror movie these days makes money and I'm sure they kept it cheap on this one, but whatever. Yeah. And do you like the idea that people under the stairs reboot is being penned by Ezra Clayton Daniels for monkey paw and universal. Do we need another People under the stairs movie. Just one day. Another you. one. There's been 20 people under the stairs movies, guys. Uh yeah, I think we can do with another one. There's only been one. It's not like a classic. It's definitely the kind of movie where you're like, this is a great idea, but maybe the execution is a little funky or whatever. This is mm-hmm. a movie they could improve on, I think, potentially. Okay. So I'm open to it. Yes. You're saying they could improve on Wes Craven. How dare you? How dare you say such things? But all right. I love oh, Wes Craven. I mean, it's, that's a good movie. I grew up watching The People Under the Stairs. I've seen it multiple times, but it's not infallible. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, let's power through these super chats and let's get out of here real quick. We're going to power through these guys. So, uh, real quick. Uh, uh, bu- 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 proud of you and doing what you're doing, Jeff. Oh, I already read that one. Uh, Empire Fan 1980 says Leonardo DiCaprio for Reed Richards because he loves younger women. LOL. That's terrible. Uh, Miss Mr. Downtown says, Is Yaya still Wonder Man after all the changes? Jeff, are you hearing anything different? Yes, or no? I, again, I don't know what the changes are. I, I really okay. don't have any insight into Wonder Man. Fair enough. Steph 86 says, Any Batman 2 news, Jeff? Anything? The Batman 2? Uh, nope. Sounds like no. 
Galley Productions, I thought you said Jonah Hill uh, and not Jody Hill. No, I said Jody Hill. Uh, Eddie Adelidia, Cumberbatch and Holland as leads in the Avengers? Aren't they like the only two left? <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. I don't even, and, I don't know. I, I'm just like, these, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thor. Galley Productions, who will direct the authority? Uh, I don't know. Jeff, any any thoughts? No? No, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Al Rencher says, saw an article that said Congress... They should, they should hire the people who did NIAD and Free Solo because these oh. people can direct. Free Solo, definitely. Uh, saw an article that said Congressman demanded investigation of WB recent decisions involving stashing movies. Could this have affected the decision? No, I don't think they give a shit about a congressman going on Twitter and complaining about it. When a congressman actually gets a bill going down and being voted on, then they'll give a shit about it. Trust me on that. Uh, Tracer Fires, your thoughts on the uh, AI Edith Piaf movie? Yeah, Jeff, Edith Piaf movie coming with the e agreement of the estate that they're going to AI generate her voice, AI generate some of the songs and perhaps the performance. Your thoughts on this real quick. This isn't even a real project yet. This is just like a yeah. trade announcement. They're, yeah, they're like trying to gin up financing by saying, hey, we've got this idea and we want to do this and that and we've got the permissions, but we need someone yeah. to pay for it all. So, and, and it's like this isn't like a real movie that like would be out in theaters that we would see. This right. is an experience. We're we gonna get a James Dean hologram movie, and it never came to be either. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, again, I don't know why people freak out about this stuff. Galley Productions. Says, I didn't know Jeff was a tunologist. There you go, Jeff. Good luck for you. For, yeah, I, for I love tuna. tuna. No tunes. I've never tunes. had tuna. I've never. Empire had fan. Tuna. <laughs> no spoilers for the Marvels, but there is a moment in the movie that the movie turns into space balls. LOL. Uh, yeah. It involves cats. I would agree with that. Flurkins. Haunted, what's that? The Flurkins. The Flurkins. Haunted underscore Autumn. For this segment in the future, you have to Photoshop Jeff into that Blair Witch Corner photo. LOL. Take care, gents. Thanks for all you do. Sure, we can put Jeff in there. Uh, stream uh, Streamlabs, only one today. That's shocking. We usually get a bunch of them. Mike McKenzie says, I know you guys aren't gamers, but any thoughts on the best adaptation this year of a video game? Last of Us, Twisted Metal, Super Mario, Gran Turismo, Castlevania are nominated. Also, congrats to Yuri Lowenthal, my brother Yuri, for his nomination being in the same category with Idris Elba. Yeah, Yuri and I co-hosted two separate podcasts when I was first starting out here in this business, and I keep wanting to reach out and uh, do some Spider-Man stuff with him. So, Jeff, your thoughts? Uh, West Adaptation? Best Adaptation? Video game? Uh, I go Super Mario Brothers. I thought they just kind of nailed it. I agree, 100%. I thought they nailed it. Nailed that as well. Um, all right. Anything else we need to go? Are we good? Yes. No, there are a few things. Hold on. All right. Congrats to my FYC co-host, Perry Namaroff, who uh, was nominated mm -hmm. for the Press Award this year, which right. is pretty cool from the Publicist Guild Awards. There's two RIPs I wanted to mention. Go ahead. Dana Carvey just lost his son at 32 <sighs> years old, um, and he's he's now grieving on, on Twitter and everything. And, and so our heart goes out to Dana and the Carvey family uh he's brought me so many laughs over the years um and and this is certainly not a laughing matter um and then uh my pal kevin turin who i dedicated the first issue of the newsletter to he's the producer of euphoria and the idol i was only 44 years old uh still no cause of death i'm very you know curious as to what happened i don't know if he was sick or if it was something you know else um but a very just a guy who was always very supportive of, of me and my career uh very very nice to me and um I'm going to miss him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my, uh, my sympathies towards you, Jeff. And of course our sympathies to uh, Mr. Dana Carvey, a guy who has brought both of us uh, laughter for many, many decades and people don't do drugs, please. <laughs> or do it in moderation, like, you know, and, and help people who are going through rehab. It's important. Uh, Joshua can say, hey, John, I got to go to the world premiere of the iron claw. I got to go to the world premiere of iron claw. It was incredible. It broke me. Some scenes even gave me raging bull vibes. And I saw Mance. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, that's I, the best part of any screening is seeing Scott movie Mance. <laughs> this movie was great. Just from the uh, six rows ahead of you. Um, Harloff saw it as well. He said he liked it. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing it. It won't screen here in San Diego until after Thanksgiving is my screening. But, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, all right, Jeff, anything else? Let's get on out of here. Are we good? I know you got a newsletter, right? Anything else you want to talk about? No, that, that'll do it. That's enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to get this out by six. So I got 40 minutes to finish. Holy Christ. Uh, that's why you're one of the best writers out there. All right. Well, thank you all so much for hanging out with us tonight. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit a like on this video. Leave a comment down below. 
And some of you watch later. If you want to send in support, you can hit that super thanks button and send in a certain amount of financial support for as a thank you for doing the show. So feel free to do that as well. The super thanks button that's down there. Make free, make sure you hit that. Jeff, another fun show. Please let people know where they can find you, what you got going on, man. Insnyder.com, which I my father has been paying for for so many years in the hopes that I would do something <laughs> with the URL. And this week I finally launched it. So thanks to dad uh, and everyone who has subscribed. I really appreciate the support. It's been um, overwhelming this week. Uh, now I just got to keep yeah. it up because, geez, I'm turning out thousands of words a day for free. Yeah. <laughs> the Carnator says, uh, Jeff, thoughts on uh, Master of the Year episode one? Real quick, what can you say? Under embargo, can't say anything. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Can't say anything. There you go. Um, ask me, you can follow me at the Roka says on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, the Outlaw Nation on Twitch. I'm going to see American fiction tonight. So I will post my out of theater reaction for that as well. I can't wait to see it. My other out of theater reactions are up from this week of the screenings, uh, but uh, th th you can catch that one tonight. Uh, don't forget about Geek Buddies tomorrow and maybe some reviews this weekend as well for some other stuff that I'm taking a chance on. And don't forget, Monarch drops tomorrow. The Crown has dropped tonight. So watch those things because I'll probably be reviewing those over the weekend as well. Thanks for the lively chat. Thanks for the Streamlabs and the Super Chats. We love you all madly. Have a great weekend. And we'll talk to you next time with another brand new episode here of the Hot Mic. Peace. Thank you.